Hello and welcome. In this video or videos, we're going to be talking about using Git with R and RStudio. Uh, first off, we're going to start off kind of abstractly talking about version control and Git and uh, why I use it and how it works and the basic operations. And then after that, we're going to move to R and RStudio and see how RStudio integrates really nicely with Git. Um, we'll set up a uh, new local repository by cloning one from GitHub and then do some of those basic operations using our studio. Okay, let's get started. Cool, so first off, why use Git? Well, if you're taking my class, it's going to be required for you uh, in order to turn your work. But uh, Git also is a widely useful, widely used, probably the widest, widest used uh, version control system. Um, it helps you ensure that your work is all saved and backed up. It's also useful for tracking how your project has changed over time and also for projects in which multiple people are working on the same project together. It's also set up in a way to encourage you to document your work to make it uh, kind of more useful to you in the future uh, as you forget you know, all the work that you've done uh, and also to other people who want to build off your work and extend it in some ways. Uh, Git also lets you share publicly um, you know, a version of your project, but it, you could also keep your project or portions of it private. Um, at first, it may seem like we're just adding kind of layers of extra work to just you know, open, save, and, uh, and edit. Um, but I think that you'll find it's quite quickly that it's uh, not that complicated and in a lot of ways really, really useful. So Git is an implementation of the idea of version control. Version control is just the uh, kind of abstract idea of how to create, edit, and save work related to a project. Um, focusing on the process of saving, the idea is that we want to know more about what you've saved. We want to know when you saved your work, what you saved, the difference between the current and the previous version, uh, and why you saved your work, um, allowing for anyone to review this later on. The other problem to think about is when there are multiple people working on the same project, sometimes uh, working on the same file. So we also want to think about uh, who saved this work and how do we merge conflicting versions of the same document. Um, people work on different at different paces and different sections of this project, so how can we bring all of their work together into kind of a single canonical master version um, with all of this, th all of these multiple people and all of these different kind of projects going on. Um, also, if you have two conflicting versions, we need a way to be able to merge them into a final version that we're all happy with. So Git is an implementation of version control, addressing these concerns. Um, first off, if I could just digress for a moment, I kind of want to point out that this is a cool example of how ideas or theory get turned into things, you know, implemented in actual products and services that improve our work or our lives. So this process of idea refinement and then implementation, uh, plus hopefully some more refinement, is central to our jobs as researchers or analysts. Um, you know, one example, uh, most of you are economists in my class, so you, in micro you would have learned about the continuous double auction. That's an idea of how to bring buyers and sellers together into a market. You know, there's certainly mother, other, many other ways to do that. Um, and then one implementation of the continuous double auction is the open outcry market. The New York Stock Exchange is run via, well, used to be run via an open outcry implementation of uh, the continuous continuous double auction, and then today it's run, um, New York Stock Exchange run on computers via another implementation of the continuous double auction. And you can imagine there's a lot of, you know, precise details to sort out in how they implement it. Um, yeah, sorry for the digression, but probably took too much time. But my point is just that this is another example of uh, taking idea or theory, um, come up by some researchers, implemented by other researchers or practitioners, and coming up with a system that's now hugely useful and used by many, many people and free. This one happens to be free and open source. Oh, and then I should mention also that uh, GitHub, um, GitHub is separate from Git, is just a nice interface to work with Git, making it much easier to, you know, inter interface, interact with it. It's not unlike how our studio makes it easier to work with R. Now I'm going to go over abstractly one basic version of workflow with Git. Um, certainly, there's you know many may do things differently. If you're working for some kind of big centralized organization with lots of code review, quality assurance processes, or you're running or say you're running an open source 
um, repository or contributing to one, you may work with Git differently. Um, but here's a nice simple example, highlighting the features that you're going to want to know to get started with Git, uh, as well as required for the course that I'm teaching. I think it's going to be a nice simple example too that highlights some really important features for, for Git and some of the nomenclature. Um, and then after that, we're going to go through an example using RStudio. Um, RStudio has some really nice integration with Git to kind of make your life a bit easier. All right, first off, some visuals. So have a look at this dot. Um, this is your project snapshot. That dot you could think of as the current state of your project. So that is the current set of all these files in some projects directory. Um, in the context that we're going to be working with it, this is going to be a folder on a hard drive, either your hard drive or up on GitHub, um, with files in it. Simple as that. Great, so when we get started, we're going to have some initial version of our project. Um, we could get this initial version of a couple ways. We might create the initial version ourselves, say starting with like an empty directory on your computer, um, or we might clone it from existing directory somewhere else. So you have initialize, init, or clone. Now visually, I want to show you how we indicate a new version of a project, a new project snapshot. Uh, suppose we were to save this project, uh, we want to make a distinction visually between the old version and the new version. The most recent version we call the head, um, indicating it by kind of a, a blue dot versus a more pale white dot. Um, as you save your work, you might imagine a ton of these project snapshots evolving through time. In this example, going from uh, left to right. So next we're going to show cloning. That's where we take a version of this project from uh, the kind of master branch, the canonical version, and we pull it down to our local um, Git repository. We refer to that canonical version, the high-level version, as our master branch, and we refer to the lower version as our develop branch. Now in your local version, you're free to edit it and change it, and that won't affect that master version. So now you have that local version on uh, you know, the develop branch on your computer. Um, as you start to make edits, we refer to these edits, you know, these changes, these new save versions on your local machine. Um, we are staging these stages, these changes. Uh, you may, may have changed a lot. That is to say you may have um, added a lot of new files or edited existing files. These changes are all quote unquote staged. Um, none are added to your local repository until we do the next step. The next step is called a commit, right? So, uh, you know, we've brought down this version to our local machine. We've made a bunch of edits. That is to say, we've added files, say added folders, deleted files. We've opened up, you know, files and then changed them inside uh, and then saved them. Uh, but those aren't reflected in the new newest version of our, um, you know, local snapshot or local project until we do this thing called committing. When you do commit, that's going to be added to the head, you know, the kind of top version of your local project. Um, and then you're also going to be at, required to add a comment explaining the change. You'll likely want to make a number of these different commits for each section, kind of group of changes that you make that kind of logically fit together into a single group. And then this act of committing is going to change the local version, your local version of um, this project. Great. So now what we've done, you know, we've brought, we've cloned that version of uh, the repository to our local machine. We've made a bunch of changes. We've committed those changes, um, you know, with all that kind of extra documentation that makes it kind of easy to understand what happened later on in the future. And so now we have a local version that we want to um, rejoin, you know, add, push back up to that master canonical, the master branch. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to do it in this three-part um, process where we pull, we merge, and then we push. Um, we have to do these three parts because there might be a chance that that master uh, branch may have changed since we originally cloned it. So we're going to pull that master version um, off the canonical version, the master branch, and that's called a pull. So now sitting on our machine, it's going, Git is going to say, well, we have our local version and we have a master version, and where, wherever it conflicts, um, it, we're going to need to do some sort of action. So how do we deal with all of those conflicts? Well, we're going to deal with them with a merge. If the master, um, you know, after we pulled it, and if the master hasn't changed at all, um, then we're just merging in all of the commits we've made, the edits we've made locally. Um, 
Um, in our class, it's going to be this kind of simple version of merging. Um, however, you could, might imagine that if that master branch has changed significantly since we originally cloned it, um, this merge step actually might take quite a bit of work. Uh, but like I said, in this case, it's going to be really simple. So we merge our master branch with our local version and then address any conflicts in the code. So now our local repository is a version of that master branch taking into account all of our local recent local changes in a way that you know broadly makes sense. So now what we want to do is take our clean kind of good local version that we've merged with the master branch uh, and we're going to push, that's the expression quote unquote push, our local branch up to the master branch updating it to be the new canonical version. And then in that process, um, you probably don't need to do this, but you might want to add some sort of tag or version numbering uh, to kind of indicate um, version steps. That's to say you might tag this version with useful information about it or release it as a specific version number. You know, say in this example, calling the new uh, master branch, the canonical branch version uh, 0 0.2.0. And then uh, the other thing I want to point out is that uh, what is a repository? So the repository is this whole sequence um, of events, right? So from the initialization, the cloning, all of those staging edits, and then commits, um, and then the you know um, updating that master branch through a process of a pull, and then the merge, and then the push. All of that is the repository, that whole kind of tree. That is all referred to as the repository or repo. Great, so before we go through an example using our studio, let's just kind of highlight some of the abstract kind of nomenclature that we went through. So first off, we had the project or snapshot. That's the directory of, uh, you know, the collection of folders and files that are all kind of together form our project. Um, there's the head portion of that, which is the current snapshot of our project. Uh, so the most up-to-date up -to -date version. And, you know, there's potentially more than one head. There's the, the head of our local repository, the local the develop branch, and then there's the head of that master branch. The repository or repo is the collection of, of all those commits and branches and tags and all of that information, like the full graph. Um, we set up our repository um, through one of two ways. We either initialized it or we cloned it from an existing repository. Um, the Given an existing kind of project, you know, a directory, um, those acts of savings and changes and deletes and, you know, additions of files and folders, all that stuff, um, all of those are were staging changes to um, the project. And the act of committing is when we, we actually kind of take a collection of all of these edits and update the repository, update the current version of our project with all of, all of those changes. Um, and then the, the act of pulling and merging um, is where we take from the original, from the master branch, the canonical version, um, we, retrieve, we retrieve that canonical version and then combine it with our local version so that now the version on our computer, you know, the local, the, the develop branch is a clean version that combines the most update, updated version of the canonical branch with all of the edits that we want to make and it's now ready to push back up to that master branch. Cool, so that was abstractly what we're talking about when we talk about working with Git. Um, so now let's just do a quick, simple example um, using our studio.